experiment. Consider a basket full of mangoes. You want to check whether they are raw or ripe. One can find out by observing the mangoes individually. So we start the process. We pick up a mango from the basket and observe it. Let's say we find the mango to be raw. Then we pick up another mango from the basket, observe it and find that that's raw as well. Based on this, many of us would conclude that all the mangoes in the basket are raw. What exactly are we doing here? We examined a couple of mangoes in the basket and accordingly arrived at a general conclusion. What is the conclusion? We generalize the idea by saying that all the mangoes in this basket are raw. So by observing a specific outcome of the experiment, we concluded the observation in a generalized form. This approach of reasoning from specific to general is called as inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is logically true but may or may not be realistically true. What does that mean? Let's consider an example. Statement 1 says that the mango is a fruit and statement 2 says the box is full of fruits. We try to draw a conclusion from these two statements. From these statements, we draw the conclusion that the box is full of mangoes. Here, statements 1 and 2 are true, but the conclusion drawn, although logically true, can be false if the basket contains any other fruit apart from mangoes. It's logically true, but not definitely true. So that was inductive reasoning. On the other hand, we have deductive reasoning, where the approach is from a general argument to a specific conclusion. And unlike inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning is always true. For example, statement 1 says that all mangoes are fruits and statement 2 says that all fruits have seeds. What conclusion can we draw from these two statements? We can draw a conclusion saying mangoes have seeds. Here statements 1 and 2 are true and the conclusion will also always be true. All mangoes have seeds. So the two examples give us a clear idea about inductive and deductive reasoning. Take a few seconds to review both the cases. Now let's go back to inductive reasoning. Did you know that inductive reasoning is frequently used in mathematics? By observing the pattern that exists in a particular case, we induce a general conclusion from that outcome. The conclusion we arrive at based on inductive reasoning is called as conjecture. Conjecture is a hypothesis that has not been proven. Just because we observe a pattern in many cases doesn't mean it holds true for all cases. Conjectures must be proved for that particular case.